So I got this Kohler 48 kilowatt LP gas generator delivered. Let's take a look at it to try to figure out where to put the conduits on the slab. So I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour around it. So the door is metal, a couple of simple latches. That insulation it looks like fiberglass with a plastic sleeve on it. And there's the beast. So over on the left, you've got the uh, engine, which V8, and over here on the right, the generator, which is a about 200 amp, 220 volt. Uh, does not look like it comes with a starter battery, so apparently I get to go buy a starter battery and figure out where that goes. Probably mounts down here. Seems like that would have been included. Battery's not included, yay. Okay, uh, so the engine is a V8. It's got Kohler grounded valve covers on it there. Um, I believe it's a GM of some kind, because that's got a GM casting number on it. Uh, interesting that it has a alternator on the engine, charge the starting battery when right next to it is a monster alternator, but that's the way it goes. What do we got here? Cooling tank. It's an electric radiator fan. Not sure what that big box is there. I assume that that's a fuse box. Uh, interesting up here, there's some kind of a massive load resistor behind that grill. Uh, let me see. Rubber mounts here for the engine. And for some reason, a shipping bracket just at this one location. Get that off there. Um, some kind of really nice sewn fiberglass jacketing for the exhaust. There's a the oil drain comes out the side here. So I don't know how you'd ever get a catch pan underneath underneath that. What it is. Let's see, we've got the air cleaner over here, and intake hose goes to the uh, throttle body and the carburetor for the healthy gas. Let me go get the cover off the other side. Okay, got the cover off the other side. And got some manuals there. It's a 48 RCLC. So I assume this is the LP gas coming in here. So I assume this is basically the LP gas mixer equivalent of a carburetor. And uh, it's going into, gosh, you know, it's, it's basically fuel injected, except for it's not. So it's all electronic control on a LP gas carburetor. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what else we got over here? The exhaust comes over to this side. Again, wrapped up with more of this fantastically complex high temp jacketing on the exhaust. Uh, there's a valve like this on the other side also. It's uh, for draining coolant, I assume handle's been cut off, so I assume that that's made only happen in special circumstances. Let's see, LP gas fitting comes in here from the side rail, and then on the back, it looks like maybe there's two electronic LP shutoff valves, maybe a bender type thing. Um, the LP gas piping's huge, like an inch, inch and a quarter maybe. And there's a uh, uh, flex, flexible coupling supplied with it. I assume that this is supposed to go between the LP gas, the uh, external regulator, and this fitting here. And on the electric side of things, there's the big box. Of course, I can't power it up. It's got the control panel there with a little LCD on it. And the uh, breaker. I assume that's a big breaker to switch everything off. What's the rating on that? 200. Yep. 
some kind of pretty complex connector or control module. I guess that's a control module. Maybe that's the engine computer. It's got a lot of connections on it. And the air cleaner for the engine uh, mounted so it gets cool air from this end. I assume that that's a cartridge air cleaner. Externally, there's not a huge amount to see. One interesting thing is that the exhaust goes into this box that sits at the end of it and I assume inside that box is the engine radiator. Um, well what's interesting to me is that the exhaust doesn't come out of this. So apparently what they've done is uh, run the exhaust through a muffler or maybe some kind of a diffuser, mixed it with the outgoing radiator air and the exhaust just comes out with the radiator here. I'm not entirely sure of that. There is some kind of a plate that can be removed up here on top. So maybe the exhaust can be rerouted up top. So I don't think I've got anything else to show you on this. I'm not much of an expert on generators, but I thought while well, this thing's brand new, I'd take some video and if you're interested in finding out more about this 48 kilowatt generator, you can maybe freeze frame these things and see it so let me see here this must be maybe an oil temp pressure sensor probably not coolant because they'd mount the coolant closer to the thing they're measuring there's a distributor i assume it's electronic ignition looks like the coils back in there uh the spark plugs interesting to me maybe they're common for gm engines but they've got metal caps over the spark plug boots and heat shields there Another GM casting number, which further reinforces that this is probably a General Motors engine of some kind. There's that uh, coolant drain valve on the opposite side. I showed you the one on this side. Uh, massive generator. And uh, probably bigger than we need, but this is what was available without going through the winter with no backup power. And we're ready to have our backup power. So as a little post note here, I'm going to show you the transfer switches. For historical reasons, our house has a 400 amp service, which portions out to two 200 amp panels in the house. So this is the RDT CFNC 200 switch. Like that, a pretty box about the size of the. Looks like it's screwed down. Hang on. Okay, got the panel open. It's kind of interesting. It has these nice knurled screws that hold the panel door on. Yay for that. But they're not captive. What the heck? I don't expect it to be very long before they end up lost in the grass. Uh, inside the generator, an expanse of galvanized metal. It's got the manual in it. This is the RDT switch. And it's got some kind of a soft control there. And a 200 amp breaker and 15 in the battery charger position. Maybe I'll grab a screwdriver and pull that panel off and take a look in there. Okay, got the big galvanized cover off. And now we can see inside of it. Um, I assume that that's, you know, so it looks like this is basically some kind of a huge toggle switch, I assume activated electromagnetically somehow and uh, some kind of little computer control board over there which goes up to the keypad some kind of a largely unpopulated connection panel there massive ground lugs and minor ground lugs and uh, so I don't know maybe Line power comes in there, maybe. And then maybe one of these sets is the generator and one of them is the load. Not sure. Eh, it's probably all in the manual. But anyway, there's the inside of the transfer switch number one. <laughs> I wish I knew more about this. I will know eventually, but I don't know now. And uh, we'll find out what it looks like. So I'll get the other one cracked open and we'll take a look at it. All right, so that first panel we looked at was an RDT. This second panel is an RXT 200 amp, and 
say the way the salesman explained it to me one of these is a master one's a slave uh, not being an expert and being barely knowledgeable about this I'm not sure which switch so again it's got these nice uh, non-captive uh, screws let me get those out okay got the outside painted cover off and exposing the inside galvanized cover this one has even less going on than the first one just has a 200 amp service disconnect breaker on it so let's pop that cover off and see what's inside and we've got uh, instruction manual here some kind of a current transformer looks like all right so well, it does have some kind of a circuit board for doing something in here. I wonder what these are powered by in that little amount of time between when the utility power and the generator is starting up. I wonder if there's some DC passed over to it from the generator or what? 